told me some things that are going to happen and you must live here on a higher frequency and at a higher altitude uh, because the bigger planes fly at a higher altitude uh, and the eagle flies at a higher altitude than the little bears uh, and when you live here i want to see you flying before manpower 2003 i want you to fly at an altitude that you have never flown before and you one of the things you must understand is the higher the altitude the more oxygen you require so I want to give you some keys that will release the necessary oxygen into your life that the higher you climb, you can survive and you don't have to come down. Is anybody hearing me? Shout yes. I want to talk to you for some few minutes on the subject I entitled by revelation and by personal experience. I'm coming out with this revelation entitled Dealing with the patterns of the bloodline. Say bloodline patterns. I can't hear you. Say the patterns of the bloodline. Now every one of you seated here under the sound of my voice, there are specific patterns in your bloodline. Some of the patterns are good and some of them are evil and bad. But you got to know that weaknesses of your bloodline and the strengths of your bloodline to be able to deploy the strengths of your bloodline and to be able to disengage yourself from the effects of the negative patterns of the bloodline we want to begin with the abrahamic family the abrahamic family if you please turn your bibles with me i'm going to read quite some few scriptures uh, because i want to give you some weapons and keys uh, that you can use on the enemy when the enemy comes at you you don't fight the enemy with emotions you fight the enemy with keys you fight the enemy with weapons amen uh, you may stand on your feet as the tradition of our bishop is hallelujah these are good things to follow after genesis the 12th chapter of genesis reading from the 11th verse of the 12th chapter of genesis reading from the 11th verse to the 13th verse and it came to pass when he was close in entering egypt that he said to sarah his wife indeed i know that thou art a fair and a beautiful woman to look upon verse 12 therefore it will be or happen that when the egyptians shall see you they will say that this is his wife and they will kill me but they will keep you alive then he said i urge you to say thou art my sister that it may be well with me for thy sake and that i might live because of thee let us pray uh, father we position ourselves in the heavens, uh, where we are seated with christ above all principalities and powers and thrones and dominions and, and things that are visible and things that are invincible uh, in the name of your son jesus uh, we deploy the breath of jehovah and the unctions of eternity uh, that your man servant may function under the unctions that god giveth and that i may speak as an oracle of jehovah and to every man and woman that hears the sound of my voice i may live here impacted with a fresh unction and anointing of the holy ghost for the end time harvest and for the end time assignments and commissions and so now from the heavenly where all authority and power and dominion proceeds from i bind principalities and powers and i break the hold of the heavenly host of darkness in the heavenly realm and the workers in the earth realm i cut the communication lines and the power supply lines and i say to the enemy you are disallowed forbidden you are a trespasser you are held in contempt of the word of the lord you will not touch you will not misrepresent anything i say you will not bring any misunderstanding you will not bring a hedge into any relationship here for god for god 
in the midst of his people is mighty and therefore take your hands off every man and every woman under the sound of my voice and now I break the prison gates open and I release prisoners in the realms of the spirit I cut in asunder the brass of iron and I destroy the gates of brass and I call the captives to go free and to come free that tonight and today something new will happen in this house I want you to lift up your hands everybody there is a song in my heart I'm not a singer I'm gonna try and sing it and I want every one of you to remember this song the rest of your life I'm gonna try to sing it and you can sing with me when you get it yesterday is gone well another day has come do something new in my life yesterday is gone another day has come do something new in my life do something new in my life something new in my life something new in my life oh god do something new Something new in my life today. Everybody sing something new. Do something new in my power. Something new in our lives. Something new in our lives. be seated that's the best I can do I don't sing like others I'm a preacher but I need God to do something new in my life I don't know about you but I'm sick and tired of old testimony I need something fresh David said I shall be anointed with fresh oil and I need some fresh oil upon my head the Bible said let not your head lack oil I need some fresh oil I got some issues I got some challenges I got some mountains to climb and some giants to kill and some rivers to cross and some nations to go and I need a fresh oil is anybody hearing me come on shout yes before I get excited I want you to appreciate what I'm about to say number one please understand that salvation is not automatic Jesus died and shed his blood for the entire world but people are not going to get saved until they acknowledge Christ as their Lord and receive him as their Savior it is not automatic to be born again if you don't acknowledge Christ and accept him and confess him believe in your heart and confess with your mouth so even though the price is paid and we are released and emancipation is declared we need to know by the preaching of the word to respond before we are saved number two when you got born again it was your spirit that was born again it was in your soul and it was in your body that was born again when the Bible said if any man being Christ is a new creature and all things are passed away or and all things becomes new he's referring to your spirit and not your soul and not your body 
because if you don't get these foundations right you can be saved tongue speaking holy ghost feel and act crazy and don't understand what's going on with you so i want to lay the foundation that salvation is in three folds you were saved what was saved your spirit you are being saved what is being saved the soul how is the soul being saved by the renewing of the mind the Bible said, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed. The transformation is not your spirit. The transformation here is dealing with the soul, the transformation of the soul. So the spirit is saved. God dwells in the spirit, but the soul needs transformation by the renewing of the mind. And when he talks about the renewing of the mind, it's dealing with the subconscious and the conscious. It means that you need the laser beam of the word of God to penetrate the subconscious and the conscious and to deprogram and decode every programming in the subconscious and send a new information through the subconscious to the conscious that you are a new breed and you don't do certain things you used to do before because Christ dwells in the inside of you so your spirit can be born again and you can be a tongue talking, speaking, baptized Holy Ghost filled water baptized and blood wash and redeem and heavily booked and confirm and still act like you are unsafe because the soul remains unsafe and carnal until the mind is renewed the soul is still the same and that's why you must get every tape every book every material sometimes i listen to the bishop's tapes about 21 times one tape i have a tape on him right now i'm listening for i've been listening to this tape for days and i still can't get everything he's trying to say because the old man don't want to respond to new truths the old man is used to the religious ways and the ways of the soul and you need to keep on feeding the subconscious and allow the laser beams of God's word to decode and to penetrate and to enter the subconscious and bring the subconscious on that divine editing divine editing we need the memories to be divinely edited we need some divine infusions into the subconscious and we need the repairing the restoration and the healing of the soul because you see when you got saved every problem you had in your soul was still there even though you were born again it was like ezra built the temple the temple was built by ezra but the walls of jerusalem was broken down and the gates were all bent down the temple can be likened to the inner man the spirit and the soul can be likened to the walls of jerusalem that was broken the temple is built but the walls are broken down the spirit is born again redeemed but the soul is damaged and so you need a repairing of the soul and the healing of the soul and the restoration of the soul by the renewing of the mind and the training of the soul by the word and the spirit so you understand that you are not a soul you are not a body but you are a spirit you live in a body and you have a soul so you must learn how to train your soul by your spirit through in the renewing of your mind so please understand that salvation is in three folds you were saved you are being saved by the renewing of your mind the soul is being saved the body shall be saved when jesus comes again so the last thing that is going to be saved is this body but the first thing that is saved when you got born again is your spirit the second thing and the next thing that is being saved by personal discipline and efforts and an attitude and inner tenacity and spiritual intensity and commitment and devotion to the word of god is the soul so understand that because i'm going to say some very serious things to help you now let's examine the abrahamic family in Genesis the 12th chapter we just read talks about the fact that Abraham the father of faith went into Egypt and the Bible makes it very clear that Abraham did lie a 
and said that Sarah was the sister and not the wife for two reasons number one she was fair please keep the word fair in your mind she was fair two beautiful now number two he said she's my sister because she was fair beautiful and he said that because he was afraid so Abraham the father of faith feared he lied and he was afraid okay come with me to Genesis 26 and verse 7 Tw Genesis 26 and verse 7 I want to lay some foundations before we begin to deal with some issues here right now Genesis 26 and verse 7 Kibi, if you are there just read with me fast because I gotta go I gotta work this thing well and the man of the place asked him of his wife mm -hmm. and he said she's my sister for he feared to say she's my wife Lee said he the men of the place should kill me for Rebecca because she was fair to look upon now I want you to look at me right now I'm gonna to talk to you plain as men now you must understand that at the time that Abraham married Sarah Isaac was not born number one number two when Abraham lied because the wife was fair and he was afraid Isaac was not there now Isaac comes on the scene Isaac did not even choose the woman he married the woman he married was chosen for him but the guy who went to bring the wife that Isaac married saw two sisters but somehow he was influenced by the DNA of that bloodline to go for a woman that was fair and look exactly like the mother of Isaac and the Bible said when he brought Rebecca and Isaac saw Rebecca he loved her and he was comforted so men you are not going to be comforted unless you love the woman the woman only gives you comfort when you love her and the bible said he loved her and he was comforted but understand something here the same thing the father faced and went through was the same thing the son faced and went through now when the father lied and he was afraid of death the son was not there but the son found himself in the same situation where he was afraid and he had to lie because of the same thing his father was afraid for and his father lied for same thing everybody say like father like son I'm going to establish something here because I know some men here like me because I never knew my father until I was 18 years old that was the first time I saw my dad and I didn't like my father I hated my father because he didn't take care of me for those 18 years and mama had poisoned me about him so I hated him and the Lord said to me when I got saved he said son what you hate you become but what you forgive you are released from so the lord said son if you don't forgive him and stop hating him you will become exactly like him and you will do the same thing he did because what you hate you become and what you forgive you are released from and there are men here who hate your father and somehow unconsciously you are acting just like him you are looking just like him you are behaving just like him and you are doing the very things you hate him for and you don't even know why you are doing that because you are not close with him but blood don't change dna don't change and whatever was in your subconscious and in your dna before you were born even though you don't know your father you are still being influenced by stuff in the dna and stuff in the subconscious and when you got born again your dna did not change because you got born again and the stuff in your subconscious mind did not change because you got born again now hear me abraham's bloodline were attracted to fair women the old man was attracted to a fair woman the son was also attracted to a fair woman it means that it doesn't matter how 
good any woman is if you are not the kind that the men of that bloodline are attracted to it doesn't matter how much you try they will never like you and they will never love you and that's why a lot of men marry under some strange circumstances women they did not love and women they weren't attracted to but somehow they were shut up by some circumstances beyond their control and they married a woman that was not the kind and the time that the men of their bloodline loves and are attracted to so it doesn't matter how much the woman tries how humble how holy god still she is how loving how much she fears god it doesn't matter what she does she can never please you because she's not the kind and the type she doesn't have in her dna that unction and that thing that makes men of your bloodline fall for women of that kind i'll prove it to you Turn your Bibles with me. Look at Genesis 27. Genesis 27 and verse 36. Okay. Genesis 27 and verse 36. Are you there? Okay, keep it quickly. And come near me. Genesis 27 verse 36 and he said is he rightly not named Jacob for he had supplanted me these two times he took away my birthright and behold now he has taken away my blessing I want you to look at me right now I want to establish something the grandfather lied the son lied and the great grandson also lied first generation lied second generation lied third generation was not just a liar but was a schemer and at this time has become an arm robber robbing his brother of his bed right now what you must understand about some of the things i'm about to say is the bible said any branch that bears fruit i prune it so it might bear more fruit now this is where the danger is and this is why you must get this message before you go home hear me out anything that you suppress and you prune by discipline but you don't kill the seed or lay the axe to the root it will rise up stronger in the next generation and destroy the next generation so we must stop trying to suppress things in the bloodline through discipline and rather kill it because if you don't kill it it will rise up if you suppress it it will rise up in the blood in the next generation to destroy the next generation so suppressing it is not the key discipline is not the key you just got to kill this thing you must lay the axe to the root and uproot it because what you don't the enemy you don't kill in your time will live and fight your children I'll explain to you let's go on Jacob now became a big-time liar you must understand that the sons of Jacob also Jacob lied to his father scheme I won't go into the depths of that because the bishop gave us such an awesome outstanding exposition about jo about Jacob heavy duty stuff so I wouldn't, I wouldn't touch it I said to somebody the other day I said uh, nobody is able to bring the word home like bishop thomas dj and, and i said it don't matter how anointed you are you just got to understand that god is just giving it to him and he got it come on church the man can sleep and wake out of sleep and preach you from hell to heaven my god my god what a blessing we have now hear me the sons of jacob also lied to jacob he lied to his father skim took his brother's birthright <clears throat> then his sons lied to him all of them lied to him when it came to joseph 
they sold him into slavery and told the father that joseph is dead they lied to him deceived him heavy duty and the thing was in the blood somebody say the blood there was a pattern there was a pattern that this bloodline was falling now he came to J jacob jacob had opportunity to marry two sisters and he chose a particular one who was fair just like the mother he wasn't attracted to leah because leah was not fair i prove it to you come with me look at genesis 29 and the 11 verse Genesis 29 and the 11 verse. Genesis 29 and 11. Genesis 29. Let me read the 11 verse and then you get ready for the 17 verse. Look at Genesis 29 and the 11 verse. And Jacob kissed Rachel and lifted up his voice and wept. Look at me. I'll show you something why the guy wept. He had run away from home and he was very close to mama because mama knew some things that his father didn't know and so when it was time for the bed right to be released the mother said son when you were in my womb you and your brother began to wrestle in the womb the two of you could not stay together and there was a war that began between you and brother over the birthright in my womb and when i went to god god told me the youngest would take the blessing and not the eldest now your father didn't hear what i heard and if i don't do something to make it happen your father is going to give the blessing to the wrong person women know things fathers don't know i'm not, I'm not going to go into the details but hear me jacob was very close to the mother and at this time he had left home for a long time and he didn't know when he would be meeting the mother again so when he met rebecca she looked just like the mother the bible says she was fair i'll prove it to you fair just like the mother so when he kissed her something there was a transfusion that went into his dna activated memories through the emotions and the subconscious and he lifted up his voice and wept and the reason was because he she reminded him of mama and a lot of men married their mother you gotta look like mama you got to cook like mama you gotta be like mama you gotta do things the way mama did it you have to act like mama you gotta talk like mama you gotta dress like mama you gotta smell like mama if you don't smell like mama cook like mama act like mama you are a problem they'll never love you and if you are not like mama mama will not also approve of you because mama never approve of leah but mama approve of rachel because you see all the time jacob married leah mama never sell help to leah but when jacob married rachel mama sent her maid who served there for many years to go help rachel Ma, I wish I had time to work this thing, but listen, sit down, sit down, let's work this thing. Look at Genesis 29 and the 17 verse. Genesis 29 and the 17 verse. Genesis 29, 17. Leah was tender-eyed. Leah was what? Tender-eyed. Go ahead. But Rachel was beautiful and well-favored. The word beautiful in the Hebrew also means fair. Now, Leah was not fair, but Rachel was fair. There are men sitting here, you like a type and a kind of women. And it doesn't matter how anointed you are and how good a sister is, if she is not built, 
in that shape or form you see the bible says that we are fearfully and wonderfully made and some are fearful and some are wonderfully made and some are fearfully made and some of the brothers they like the fearfully made and some like the wonderfully made you didn't hear what i say the women don't a particular way and they are not built in a particular shape it doesn't matter what god says and what happened you will not go for that woman because it's not the kind that the men of your bloodline are attracted to this is the reason for extramarital affairs When Bishop said, you can do something, but you are not it. You do something, you did something, but you know that is not you. It means that there is something in the subconscious that influences your action that the conscious is not in control of. So you are married. But it's not the kind and the type that the men of your bloodline are attracted to so you see another one you see jacob married leah in the night so he didn't know what he married a lot of men didn't know what they married till they married you married in darkness at the time you married you didn't have light you didn't have revelation you married for where you were you didn't marry for where you were going so even though you are married you are looking outside the window of your house looking on the internet and watching naked women watching all kinds of movies on the television that you shouldn't watch because you are trying to find out where rachel is because what is what you have in your bed is not rachel it's leah so even though you are married you know that this is leah and so you are still searching and looking out for rachel because you married in darkness nobody want to talk about it but i will talk about it jacob didn't know what he married so when who when he woke up in the morning and the light came on he looked and realized that that wasn't rachel but that was leah a lot of you when you marry you didn't have light you didn't have illumination you married in the time of ignorance so when you had light you now became enlightened and realized that you married Leah and not Rachel and you don't know what to do with Leah. You are legally bound to Leah, but your heart is with Rachel. God can turn that thing around. God can turn the situations around. It's a matter of deprogramming the subconscious and dealing with the actions of the DNA. And it can be supernaturally done. Let's go on. Let's look at some few scriptures. Let me lay my foundations quickly. Now, let me lay some foundations quickly. Somebody say patterns of the bloodline. There were many interesting patterns in this bloodline. In this bloodline, the men lied and the wives also lied. Abraham lied, Isaac lied, Jacob lied. Number two, Abraham was attracted only to fair women, Isaac was attracted to only fair women, Jacob was attracted to only fair women. We move on. Now, Sarah lied when she laughed in her heart and God heard it. She said, No, I didn't laugh. That was a lie. Then Rebecca met Jacob to lie. Then Rachel lied to the father when she stole the father's idols. She lied and said, No, I didn't. Then the next thing is the 
men of this bloodline had another bloodline pattern. All their firstborn had serious challenges and difficulties and didn't make it with the inheritance. Number one, Abraham firstborn, according to the flesh, did not make it with the inheritance. Isaac firstborn didn't make it with the inheritance. The battle of the inheritance or the birthright began in the womb when it came to Jacob and Esau. And when Rebecca was pregnant, she felt this war inside of her. So she said, God, what's going on in me? And God said, there is a battle over the birthright between these two brothers in the womb. They are two nations and they are fighting over the birthright subconsciously. It was a subconscious thing. They didn't even know why they were doing it. It was in the blood. Say in the blood. And in the case of Isaac, the firstborn didn't take it. It was the secondborn, the youngest. Now, if you move from Isaac and you come to Jacob, you realize that in the case of Jacob, his firstborn, Reuben, didn't take it. Reuben couldn't make it. Then when it came to Joseph, between Ephraim and Manasseh, the firstborn also didn't take it. There was a pattern in the bloodline that was against the firstborns. And I need to pray for all firstborns here that there will be a rearrangement of whatever took place in the womb and whatever is in the bloodline and in the DNA that fights the firstborn. I want you to live here with an upper hand and a victory over that situation. If you're hearing me, shout yes. Now, the firstborn of Jesse on the same bloodline, the blood of the line of Judah didn't make it. It was the youngest, David. The firstborn of David, Absalom, didn't make it. It was Solomon in the blood, in the blood. Okay, let's see some few things. There's another problem in this bloodline. I'm going to prove to you that will blow your mind. This bloodline, the men attracted a particular kind of women and all their wives were barren. They were all barren. Abraham married for 25 years and Sarah was barren. Then his son, Isaac, married Rebecca and she was barren for 20 years. Then Jacob married Leah and Rachel, and both were barren. And the team players in this, in this particular bloodline all had extramarital affairs, the team players. Abraham was to receive the seed. He had an extramarital affair because there was a problem with the marriage with the wife. She couldn't have kids and the wife manipulated him to have extramarital affairs. It means that the woman can vex you, press your button, trigger something in you. And if you are not careful, you can be pushed and vexed to go outside and fulfill that extramarital affairs blood pattern in your bloodline. So you've got to be careful when your wife pushes your button or triggers you because it's a chain reaction. It can lead you into trouble. My wife used to trigger me and push my button. And when I came to manpower last year, I was divorced. I was divorced. I was tired and she was tired and she walked out on me and listen God said to me Bishop spoke to me and Bishop counseled me and said you got to think about the future not just yourself and Bishop said you got to fight for your family you got to fight for this marriage I said, Bishop, I've worked it for 20 years. I'm tired. I can't take it anymore. 
He said, you are not under obligation to do what I'm telling you, but you pray, you go to God. So I went to God and God said, son, I will forgive you if you remarry another woman and I'll still use you and still anoint you and still prosper you because I have determined to do that before you were born. But if you don't fight this thing and overcome it, your children will live to fight it in the next generation. So, I remarried my wife again. We're working it out. It hasn't been easy, but things are getting better. Because now I have a better understanding that this is not a battle between me and her, but this is a battle between my children and their future. Now hear me. I find out my father had 36 children. My father divorced, my grandfather divorced, my uncles divorced, my aunties divorced, all my 36 brothers and sisters, every one of them have divorced and remarried once, twice or three times. So God said, this is a pattern in the bloodline. And if somebody doesn't deal with it, I will forgive you for the divorce. But then you can't overcome this thing. And God said, son, you can only have authority over that which you have overcome. So you cannot free your children from it if you don't overcome it. I want you to work with me quickly. I'm going to try and finish quickly. Now, look at me quickly. We all have flies to catch, so I, I need to work this thing fast. I want you to look at me right now. Work, let's look at some few scriptures right now. Let's look at Genesis. Genesis 38. And I want us to read Genesis 38, verse 27. To verse 29 Kibi. and it came to pass in the time of her travail that behold twins were in her womb and it came to pass when she travailed that one put out his hand and the midwife took the bound upon his hand a scarlet thread saying this came out first and it came to pass as he drew back his hand that behold his brother came out and she said how hast thou broken forth this bridge be upon thee therefore his name was called Perez. look at me judah who was a good team player you see jacob was a team player abraham was isaac wasn't isaac was to take the seed from the father and give it to jacob and jacob produced the 12 tribes so isaac escaped the extramarital affairs but he did not escape the pattern of the firstborn missing it. Get it here. Judah came out of Jacob. And Judah was supposed to produce for the land, for the life of the family of Israel, the kings of Israel. Because the Bible said the scepter shall not depart from Judah until Shallow comes. Now, for 10 generations, the tribe of Judah could not produce a king for the nation of Israel because in Genesis 38, the father, Judah, committed incest. And because he committed incest, the Bible said in Deuteronomy 23, look at Deuteronomy 23 and verse 2. Deuteronomy 23 and verse 2. I want to lay foundations because when you have the keys and the weapons and you begin to fire, demons are going to run out of these buildings. I'm telling you, every demon spirit that followed you here, it's going to leave you. When you go home, you are going home with your emancipation declared over your spirit, soul, and body. I came to declare your emancipation. Is anybody hearing me? Deuteronomy chapter 23 and verse 2. Read, please. Deuteronomy 23 verse 2 A bastard shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord Even to his tenth generation Shall he not enter into the congregation of the Lord Now, look at me I'm about to close now Hear me out quickly Do you realize That 
the firstborn of Judah didn't make it because the firstborn brought his hand out and pulled it back and the midwife put a kind of a scarlet rope a red thread or something on the hand to identify him that this came first when he pulled the hand back the youngest Perez broke through and came out unconsciously the pattern of the bloodline was working in the womb unconsciously some of you you started fighting in your mother's womb some of you the problems you have now started in your mother's womb and i'm going to do something right now and shock you there are a lot of situations i've dealt with with gay brothers and with women that are lesbians and when I began to deal with this thing, these are people that I love and I preach to and they call me father. And I said, God, how can I help them? And the Lord said to me the other day, he said, son, you got to go back to their mother's womb. I said, how do I do that? He said, you have to deploy my spirit to reverse and to rewind the tape of the subconscious and to divinely edit the information that was programming to them in their mother's womb when they were being incubated take for instance a mother have two girls the husband wants a boy so bad she wants to please the husband so she desires to have a boy she takes in the seed she finds out that it is not a boy but it's another girl she resents the idea of having another girl and said oh i wish i had a boy and not a girl again so the child in the womb received the information into the subconscious that i am not wanted here It's a boy that is wanted and not, not a girl. I am not wanted. So the girl is born and she has the tendencies of a boy and begins to become aggressive and always want to work with boys and not girls because she sees herself in the subconscious as a boy and not a girl. I'm going to do something right now to shock a lot of you men a mother wants a girl because she has three boys she wants a girl she takes in the seat the doctor said you are pregnant with another boy she said not again I want a girl her desire and wishes is sent the baby received the information because the state of emotion and the state of mind that the woman is in when she's pregnant is very important because that state the same emotions and everything she's going through is transferred to the child this is proven scientifically so the, the doctor said you want a girl but you have another boy she said not again i want a girl the information goes to the subconscious of the child the child is born and the child begins to act like a girl even though he's a boy he begins to have all kinds of ways of a woman does things like a woman eventually changes her sexual or his sexual organs and becomes a what a girl then the boy who was born changes his sexual organ and becomes a girl because the subconscious said and recorded in the mother's womb that you are supposed and you were supposed to be a girl you were supposed to be a boy and that's why they follow that pattern and they eventually end up changing their sexual organs i dealt with a situation where a young man got saved but before he got saved he went and started doing a surgery to change his sexual organ to become a man uh, to become a woman and he got saved that provoked me to search and i realized that one needs divine editing say divine editing 
because it's in the subconscious and it is scientifically proven that there is an aspect of the soul of man that is under the control of the subconscious and not under the control of the conscious so you do things and you don't even know why you do them and that's why paul said the evil that i do not want to do that i do and the good that i will to do i do not now i want you to look at me the battle began in the womb i want to do one thing right now sit down for one minute look at one scripture and i'm going to start praying and ministering to people right now turn your bibles with me to the book of matthew the first chapter reading from the first to the sixth verse and we are close for now thank you jesus matthew chapter one verse three matthew chapter one chapter one verse 1 to 6 the book of the generation of jesus christ is listen carefully i want you to listen carefully something is going to happen in this building right now something is about to happen in this building right now there is something supernatural that is going to happen in this building right now and and and, and if you're a brother and you are gay i don't want you to be ashamed if you want to be free I know what to do you can be loose within seconds within seconds you can be free it doesn't have to take years within seconds it can be free because all you need is to ask God to rewind the tape and to bring it to the point where the desires went in and edit it out something is about to happen right now now hear this scripture right now watch me watch me hear this scripture right now look at Matthew verse 1 from 1 to 6 read the book of the generation of jesus christ the son of david the mm -hmm. son of abraham mm -hmm. abraham begot isaac mm -hmm. isaac begot jacob mm -hmm. and jacob begot judah and judah. his brethren now everybody say judah. judah look at me remember never forget that judah was supposed to produce the king, the tribe of Judah, had the prophetic mandate to produce kings for Israel. And for 10 generations, Judah could not produce a king because of the incest that was committed by their father. And it opened a door for the enemy. And what we are going to do today is to close all illegal entry points of the bloodline that was opened by your father and your mother your great grandfather and great grandmother you see i want you to hear me this is not just dealing with generational cases it goes beyond generational cases because in the generational case you break the case but breaking the curse does not deal with the familiar spirit that is familiar with the bloodline so even the even though the case is broken the familiar spirit begins to ensure and make sure that it continues to oppress and afflict that bloodline and police the pattern of the bloodline so the door must be closed because unless the door is closed satan will always come in and the bible say neither give place to the devil so if it was your father your grandfather grandmother whoever gave place to the devil in your bloodline satan is not going to give up that place in the bloodline until somebody fights with him and say you are out and i'm closing the door now start from judah take your bibles look at it start from judah go ahead and judah begat paris judah begat who Judah begat who? Paris. Judah begat who? Paris. Paris was the youngest, the second. But he came out of the womb first because there was a pattern of the bloodline that firstborns don't make it in that bloodline. Okay? Paris, number one. Go. Judah begat Paris and Zerah of Tamar. That is one. And Paris begat Hezron. Two. Hezron, Hezron begat Ram. Three. Ram begat Aminadab. Four. Aminadab begat Nashon. Five. And Nashon begat Salmon. Six. Salmon begat Boaz of Rachel. Seven. And Boaz begat Obed of Ruth. Eight. And Obed begat Jesse. Nine. 
and Jesse begat David. Ten. Now the Bible said, the bastard will not enter the congregation of the Lord even until the tenth generation. So for ten generations, the family of Judah could not produce a king for Israel. Today, any injunction, any satanic injunctions that were placed on your bloodline against the firstborn or against the prosperity of your bloodline that has not allowed for your bloodline to rise into prominence and to remain in prominence today, today, by the authority of Jesus' name, from the heavenly perspective, today we overturn and we overrule and we revoke and reverse every satanic injunction that has been pronounced on you is about to be broken off of you. Now, this is what I want you to do. Why are you all here? Are you firstborns? How many of you are the firstborns? Okay, put your hands down first, Bones. If you are a brother, I want you all to look at me. If you're a man here, and your mother told you that she wanted a girl when she took seed of you, but you came out as a boy, I want you to wave at me. Just wave at me. This is very important. I need to deal with this thing. If you were supposed to be a girl and you came out a boy, according to your mother's desire wave at me great i need to help you out something needs to be done number two if you are a brother here and you don't like women but you like men and you don't know why you do that and you hate it and you don't like it wave at me listen these are brothers meetings so forget about being embarrassed nobody is here to embarrass you brother that's why we are men Are you a brother or a sister? You a man? And you dress like a woman. You know something? It is very easy and simple. It happens in a second. It started in mama's womb. You are not like that. Like Bishop said, you've done this, but that is not you. The real you is a man and not a woman. Now, Ma, I wish I had speak. Bring, bring this brother up here. Don't worry about it. Just come up here. Let me help you out. Bring him up here. Let me help you out. Remove this. Don't worry about it. Just remove it. Yeah, great. Look at me. You are handsome. I want you to say something with me. Say, I am happy, I am happy to be born, to be born a, boy. a boy. Close your eyes. Say again. Say, I'm happy. I'm happy to be born. To be born. A boy. A boy. Say again with me. I am happy. I'm happy. That I was born. That I was born. A boy. A boy. And not a girl. And not a girl. I'm happy. I'm happy. That I was born. That I was born. A boy. A boy. And not a girl. And not a girl. Now come here. Hold this for me. I'm gonna do something right now. Close your eyes. Look at me. Before you close your eyes, look at me. I'm gonna pray and ask the Holy Spirit to take you back into mama's womb. And I'm gonna ask the Holy Spirit to play back the tape of your memory in the subconscious and I'm going to ask the Holy Spirit to edit out whatever was said, desired and whatever was recorded in the subconscious that is influencing your actions to let you go. Will you allow me to do that? Lift up both of your hands. 
close your eyes and I want you to relax now father I deploy the Holy Ghost to take my brother back to the mother's womb now now go back to the mother's womb let the child in you return to the state and the condition of the womb by the spirit of god and number two rewind the tape of the programming in the subconscious rewind the tape now go back go back go in go in go in rewind 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 to the state in which she was in the womb and let the things that were spoken desired by mama that is influencing his actions the rejections that entered edit it out every resentment against his personality and who he is edit out spirits of every feminine spirit that entered you in the womb through the subconscious edit out in the name of jesus and now rewind forward with the right information you are a boy you are a boy you are a boy and you are happy to be a boy you are a man and now in the name of jesus christ i lose you now This is what I'm gonna do right now. I got some serious things to do. I need every brother here, I need all of you to go back to your seat for two minutes. You need to do that for me. I need to follow divine order and then I can help you. <clears throat> go back to your seat. <clears throat> I want everybody to sit down for one minute, please. <clears throat> when I was, when I came to Manpower, my hotel called me and said, you have a parcel, a Federal Express package at the front desk. There are certain procedures we have to follow, say Jubilee. God showed me what to do in closing the door there are few steps number one we have to repent on the behalf of whoever did open that legal entry door for satan in our bloodline we must repent on their behalf and then we must ask god for mercy and mercy means exemption from judgment so we need to employ the mercy of god to exempt us from the consequences of whatever action took place that opened that door to give Satan the legal entry point. The next thing we must do is we must demand from a heavenly perspective that the door that was opened legally in the bloodline be closed. Number three, we must bind the familiar spirit of the bloodline that is familiar with the strengths and the weaknesses of our bloodline we must bind that strong man and demand that that strong man be released of his assignment against our bloodline the fourth thing we must make a new decree a new decree 
of a new beginning in the bloodline number five we must give a jubilee offering say a jubilee offering a jubilee offering is a figure of 50 dollars and i did this when god showed me and i did it in certain places and the the result is unbelievable and i'm going to ask every brother here that believe that there is a particular pattern in your bloodline it may not be everybody but if you believe that there is a particular negative negative pattern in your bloodline that even though you are saved and you are born again holy ghost feel these things are still happening and fighting in your bloodline and you don't understand why they are happening i'm going to ask you to stand on your feet and i'm going to lead you to the four levels and after that i'm going to ask every one of you that do this prayer with me to make a jubilee offering i want you to stand on your feet now if you know that through the teachings you have heard there is a particular pattern in your bloodline that you see it in the life of your mother it's been in the life of your father in the life of your cousins your uncles and your bloodline and this thing keeps on holding you back it could be anger it could be pride it could be unforgiveness it could be weakness it could be laziness whatever it is but every bloodline here has a particular pattern in your bloodline that the enemy uses to gain access to you and anytime you are about to go up the enemy uses it to bring you down I want you to stand on your feet. I'm not talking about firstborns or anybody with any particular problem or situation. I'm talking about patterns of the bloodline. It could be poverty. It could be financial indebtedness. It could be it could be some kind of financial embarrassment. It, it could be it could be that you never come into prominence and you are never the head. Always something tries to undermine you. Just before you get up, something cuts you down. It may be so many things. But whatever that pattern is we can change it stand on your feet all over this place it's time to be sincere as men nobody is putting any tag on you and nobody is calling you by any name we are going past all that we are dealing with issues and patterns of the bloodline and i've shown you one of the greatest families in the bible how they have serious blood patterns of different kinds and types and every one of us here have a blood type a particular pattern of the bloodline in our life stand on your feet now i'm going to help you in prayer right now all over this place stand on your feet i'm going to help you in prayer right now this is what we're going to do i want every one of you standing i want you to listen to me and look at me right now number one raise your right hand say heavenly father I position myself through the blood of Jesus in the heavens in the throne room to represent my bloodline and I repent on the behalf of my ancestors myself directly or indirectly I repent for anything that was done that gave the devil a familiar spirit a legal entry point into my bloodline i repent of it and i bring it to closure in the name of jesus i seal the legal entry point in my bloodline i close every opening and every door the enemy has to attack to accuse to sabotage to subvert to undermine and to hinder me from going to the next level I close a new decree in the heavens over the earth that from today the familiar spirit that is familiar with my family and my bloodline that has the responsibility from the devil to police my bloodline from today that familiar spirit
the strong man of my bloodline is released from his assignment and he's bound in the name of Jesus I break your power over my bloodline and over me and whatever you have stolen and robbed my bloodline as I make my jubilee offering with fifty dollars which is a sign of jubilee I'm gonna be free my bloodline is gonna be free through my jubilee seed offering I'm going to demand that you pay back in the name of Jesus now this is what I want to do keep standing don't clap please don't clap here keep standing I want every one of you here this is very serious this is very serious I want every one of you here please don't mess with this I'm asking you a, of a particular figure because when God showed me this I did it for my wife I did it for all my four children and I did it for some of my brothers and sisters and from that day the finances of each one of these people things began to move and things began to turn I want everybody I'm not asking you to give a seed of a hundred dollars or whatever I'm asking everybody here that did the prayer with me to take a seed of fifty dollars if you are writing a check make it payable to Potter's house now I am having been asked to take an offering I'm just telling you what the spirit has given me and I'm giving it to you I want every brother every man here take a seed of fifty dollars and lift it up all over this place all over this place I want you to get an envelope if you're writing a check make it payable to Potter's house every brother if you don't have fifty dollars go to somebody and say help me out or if somebody has thirty dollars or twenty dollars work with them add your money two or three people two or three people add your monies together and make it 50 and let one hand lift up that 50 representing the three or the two it's important don't be left out if you don't have 50 work with somebody if they have 10 they have 20 they have 30 add it to this is a physical act with prophetic consequences.